Hello, you're watching Every TV with me, Bersa Betakhla. Welcome to English News Broadcast. Let us start with the major headlines for today. Three COVID-19 positive patients from hospital in the central region have recovered and have been discharged. The Northern Red Sea Region Assembly held its 17th regular meeting. Tunisia's president dissolves parliament, extending power grab. And China has decided to restrict the visas for U.S. officials. On the local news, we have an announcement from the Ministry of Health. Three patients who have been receiving medical treatment in a hospital in the central region have recovered fully and have been discharged from the facility. The total number of recovered patients has accordingly increased to 9,623, while the number of deaths stands at 103. The total number of confirmed cases in the country to date stands at 9,728. Ministry of Health, Asmara, April 1, 2022. The Northern Red Sea Region Assembly held its 17th regular meeting on 29 and 30 March under the team Sovereign Country for Generations, indicating that heavy sacrifice has been paid and is being paid to hand over the generations, a sovereign and developed country in which social justice prevails. Mr. Ibrahim Ali Sheikh, chairman of the Regional Assembly, called for integrated effort to strengthen development programs aimed at improving the livelihoods of the public. At the meeting, reports on the implemented development programs of 2021 and chartered out programs for 2022 have been presented and members of the Assembly conducted extensive discussion. The participants also discussed on the efforts that are being exerted and challenges encountered to ensure portable water supply and health of the society, activities to develop student school enrollment, as well as to boost agricultural production and water and soil conservation activities. They also adopted various recommendations, including to provide educational opportunity to school aid children, alleviate portable water supply problems in Dahlak, Bada, Naro, Kalamit, and Af'abit town, as well as to introduce community-based environmental sanitation program. The Assembly also conducted extensive di discussion on the charted out development programs for 2022. Pointing out that listening and addressing demands of the public is the responsibility of the Assembly, Ms. Asmeret Abraha, Governor of the Northern Red Sea Region, called on the members of Assembly to play a leading role in encouraging the public to reinforce participation and implementation of the charted out development drives. The Ilaberit Youth Workers Organization held its first Congress on 28 and 29 March. According to a report presented at the Congress, the organization in the past three years has conducted commendable activities regarding transferring the noble societal values to the young generation, expansion of the organization and development awareness of members, support to families of martyrs, as well as in combating the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. The participants on their part conducted discussion on the report presented and adopted various recommendations, including strengthening political activities with a view to develop the understanding of members on the objective situation in the homeland and the region and reinforcing popular campaigns, indicating that the objective of the organization is to develop conscious contribution of the youth in the national affairs. Mr. Azazi Barakhatab, head of the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students in the Ansaba region, called on partners to reinforce contribution in the effort. The residents of Berrikh Sabzon, Central Region, are conducting water and soil conservation popular campaign. According to Mr. Major Mengustab, head of the Agriculture Office in the subzone, the objective of the popular campaign that is being conducted in the 12 administrative areas and 21 villages is, the, is to redress the environment and boost agricultural production. Mr. Major went on to say that according to the program, it is to construct 1,300 meter cube of water diversion schemes, as well as 1,560 hectares of terraces so far, and one-third of the program has already been implemented. Mr. Major also said that the popular campaign is being conducted before the coming of the rainy season and will have significant contribution in boosting agricultural production. 
indicating that planting tree seedlings and water and soil conservation activities have significant contribution in redressing the environment, Mr. Tasfu Fassahatian, administrator of the subzone, said that the program is ongoing. Mr. Tasfu also called on the public to reinforce participation for the implementation of the program on time. Dear viewers, that was all with the local news. We'll be back with the international world in a short break. Welcome back. Tunisia's President Kais Said has announced on state TV that he is dissolving the country's parliament, eight months after suspending it in a July power grab. He made the announcement at a meeting of the National Security Council hours after parliamentarians held a plenary session online and voted through a bill against his exceptional measures. According to local media following the online session, Tunisia's Justice Minister Leila Jaffa asked the Attorney General to open a judicial investigation against members of a suspended parliament on charges of conspiring against the state security. Said denounced Parliament's move as a coup attempt and said those responsible had betrayed the nation. Tunisia's parliamentarians voted on Wednesday to repeal presidential decrees, suspending their chamber and giving Kai Said near total power, openly defying him in an online session, although he dismissed their meeting as illegal. It is to be reminded that President Kai Said was former law professor elected in 2019 amid public anger against the political class. And on July 25 last year, he sacked the government, froze the assembly, and seized wide-ranging powers. He later gave himself powers to rule and legislate by decree and seize control over the judiciary in what rivals so as farther blows to democracy in the birthplace of the 2011 Arab Spring uprisings. On your last news, China has decided to restrict the visas for U.S. officials in response to the U.S. visa restrictions on some China officials, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman said yesterday. According to Secretary of State Antony Blinken, the United States was restricting visas of some Chinese officials for involvement in repressive acts against ethnic and religious minority groups. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Guanbin said at a daily news conference that Beijing had decided to also impose visa restrictions to, quote-unquote, safeguard China's sovereignty, security and development interests and protect the legitimate rights and interests of the Chinese people. You're still watching every TV, dear viewers, and now a recap of the major headlines for today. Three COVID-19 positive patients from hospital in the central region have recovered and have been discharged. The Northern Red Sea Region Assembly held its 17th regular meeting. Tunisia's president dissolves parliament extending power grab. And China has decided to restrict the visas for U.S. officials. Dear viewers, that was it for today. Thanks for watching.